Well, hello and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Well, why Everlasting Summer on a Tuesday, I hear you ask? Well, it's going to be a Wednesday by the time this is made live, at least if you live in the United Kingdom. Well, I've decided that after my experiment with uh, that Gal, and if you haven't watched it, go, uh, well, that, go watch it, that was loads of fun. I thought I was going to try something a little bit different with this game as well. A number of people have asked me to do more than one episode of this a week, which is not normally what I do. So I'm going to make you guys a deal. If you want more than one episode of this a week, if you would like to, give this episode lots of likes. If I get 25 likes on this episode by Thursday evening, I will make a second episode uh, this week. And if this works, we'll repeat the experiment next week and so on so double your everlasting summer and double your fun okay in the last episode uh, Semyon was playing the nurse which quite frankly I don't think he's built for and we've already driven Yulana from the room complimented Lena oh she's so cute and now somebody's knocking on the door again some I just noticed that uh, that chart there on the left hand side the skeleton the guy's got a pointy head okay anyway again somebody knocked on the door did I miss the outbreak of an epidemic Slavia was standing at the doorway Oh, hi. Is the nurse here? Hi. No, she's not here. I'm taking over for today. If you could just please take your clothes off and lay down on the bed, we'll get on with the examination. Great. <laughs> oh, dear. I'd like... She hesitated. What? By the way, Semyon, Slavia said and looked intently at me. What? It seems like I lost my keys. Have you seen him anywhere? Sure I have. Yes, here. I found them near the canteen yesterday. I wanted to return them to you, but forgot about it. I was really bad at lying. My cheeks were red, my eyes were wandering around, and my hands were constantly shaking. Here. I was already preparing myself for the appropriate scolding, but Slavia only took the keys and said, Thanks. So, what have you come in for? I really needed to change the subject. Does anything hurt? Nah, it's nothing. Strange. I wouldn't even think that such an open person as Slavia would keep something quiet. If there's something bothering you, tell me. That's why I'm here, to treat people. I smiled widely. A little bit too widely, the top of my head fell off. No. Well, I mean, yes, but no, but yeah, but yeah, oh uh, no. Hearing that made anything possible, even division by zero. So, how can I help you? I can divide by zero, it might crack the universe, but I'd rather not. You? I guess you can't. She smiled and was going to leave, but suddenly stopped. However, could you step out for a minute? Why not? Okay. I stepped out of the infirmary and leaned against the wall. I wonder what she, might she be doing? Something that I can't even see? After a minute, the door opened and Slavia came out. She was carrying a small bundle. Ask about the bundle, do not ask. There is no way, no way on this planet that I am asking about the bundle. Oh, good lord. Now, if, if you are a, a young gentleman and do not know what is going on here, first of all, you will find out eventually. Secondly, if you are ever in this situation, don't ask. Good luck! I shouted after her. Thank you! She gave me one of her sweet smiles before leaving. I put it in my pocket. I looked at the time. It was getting late. I'd read the magazine backwards and forwards, but the nurse still wasn't here. 
Suddenly the door burst open and Elisa rushed inside. She looked at me piercingly. What are you doing here? Sitting. I admitted honestly. Okay then. You're doing it wrong. It's even better without the nurse, she murmured. Are you sick? I asked acidly. Alyssa didn't answer and came closer to me. Move over. Why? So I can open the drawer, isn't it obvious? What for? She got angry. None of your business. Well, I'm kind of in charge here. She gave it a moment's thought. Then give me some activated carbon. Stomach ache? Yes. She grinned sharply. I got a feeling that there was something wrong here. Let's give her the carbon. I'm scared of her. But you never know. What if she really has an ache? Okay. I reached into the drawer and got a packet of activated carbon. Thanks. She wrested it from my hand and ran away. It was 15 minutes till dinner and the nurse still wasn't back. I guess leaving the place like this wouldn't do. She asked me to look after it after all. And who knows what might happen if I leave. Though who would want to steal anything from here? except for Elisa stealing activated carbon. I opened the magazine again and began flipping through it for the nth time. The fashions of the 80s weren't that much fun anymore. Yawning got me several times. Genia might have been in the building. It was already six o'clock, so dinner has already started. Of course, I had to be on the watch until the end, but my stomach seemed to have its own opinion on the matter. I stood up and steadily headed to the exit. A rustling sound came from behind the door. Could it be someone else who got poisoned, broke their arm, or something even worse? I sighed heavily and pulled the doorknob. However, there was no one out there. Seems it was just my imagination. I returned inside and instantly noticed that something had changed in the infirmary. To be precise, an apple had appeared on the table. But where from? Fruits can't just materialize from the air by themselves, can they? Though in this camp anything is possible. Chances are that someone just brought it here. Maybe Lena wanted to thank me, given that she's shy and... But wait! How could she slip past me by that? Lena couldn't climb through the window after all. So there must be something else. I was suddenly overwhelmed by fear. What if the apple is poisoned? Though why would someone complicate things when there are totally, when I'm here totally helpless and can be killed way more easily? Or it might be the apple which Eve tasted in the Garden of Eden. In that case, certainly I shouldn't eat it. The same second my stomach reminded me it was there by the rumbling treacherously. However, it would take time to close the infirmary, reach the canteen, to get food. My stomach is about to eat itself. There's nothing wrong, I guess. Once again, I tried to remember if this apple was here before. In the end, it must have appeared from somewhere. Maybe it got in here through the window. The shutter was slightly open. So someone must have reached in and put it there. Nothing serious, however. Oh, let's eat the apple. Finally, hunger prevailed, and I started chewing on the right green apple with gusto. The taste seemed normal, though I don't think even the strongest poison can be tasted. But it's too late to think about that. It was time to go for dinner. On the way, I ran into Electronic. Clothed, fortunately. So how's it going? Did you find Shurik? Wrong voice. No, still no sign of him. Don't worry. We'll find him. I tried to cheer him up. Too much time has passed. I'll just keep on searching. What about dinner? No, finding Shirik is more important. He muttered thoughtfully. I left him at the crossroads and wished him good luck. 
Pioneers crowded in the doorway. I quickened my pace, trying not to be the last one on the line, at least for today. And I was lucky. In the far corner was an absolutely empty table. I took my dinner quickly and sat at the table. Tonight's dinner consisted of fruit soup and a pair of buns. For some reason I was still thinking about the nurse. This set surprised me at first, but the taste was actually nice. I concentrated on eating. Lena, let's go there. Look, it's three free chairs. Lena and Miku stood in front of me. Are these taken? Wondered Lena. No, take a seat. Of course, I wished she was alone. Thank you. As soon as Lena and Genia jumped up, uh, as soon as Lena said that, Genia jumped out from behind her back. I sit there. There's no places left. She said, putting a tray on a table and sitting down, not even waiting for my answer. Sure, make yourself at home. I muttered sorrowfully. What? Nothing. To tell the truth, I wanted to reduce the whole company to just Lena, though neither Miku nor Genya were causing much trouble. Except one was too talkative and the other was too arrogant. But nevertheless, they were absolutely harmless, especially comparing to some others I could name. It looks like I forgot my key. Don't worry, take mine. I was surprised by Miku's short reply. Do you live together? Of course, didn't you know? Together, our cabin is the rearmost. I mean the farthest from here, I mean the last one. I wouldn't have been surprised if somebody told me that Lena lived with Slavia. Or that Genia, or with Genia at worst. Even electronic. But silent and shy Lena and excessively talkative Miku as a pair? That's really a surprise. <sighs> Did you find Shurik? It was strange that Genya is disturbed by someone's problems. No. Surely he is in the village buying cigarettes. Or vodka, she snorted. Village? At the moment, at that moment, the conversation got far more interesting. Got a problem with villagers? Genya looked amazed. Do you mean there's a village nearby? I think so, she said uncertainly. I looked at Lena and Miku, but they were busy with their meals and did not pay attention to our conversation. You mean, you, you don't know exactly? Why should I care? Genya stared at her dish. But there must be something nearby. Listen. Listening. I don't know. Will you let me eat? Seems like I won't get anything from her. Though there is a chance that she really doesn't know. The remaining time was spent listening to Miku talk about some nonsense. I was just slowly going mad in the silence. Obviously, the first thing I did after getting out after that was inhale a great breath of fresh air. The sun was setting, which was odd. I didn't realise it was running. I decided to take a walk. It's highly unlikely that I'll find anything more exciting to do for the rest of the evening. That way, something interesting could arise quite unexpectedly. And let's just hope it's not electronic. Or oh, Yolana. I was approaching the square when I heard a land bang. It seemed like something had exploded. I was paralysed. I'm in a hostile environment, not knowing the rules and the laws of this place. It would be better for me to run. But at the same time, I was curious. Probably I would have, could have just kept standing there, but someone grabbed my hand. It was Olga. Why are you still standing here? Let's go and see what happened. Can't you ever manage without me? I begged her pitifully. It shouldn't be anything serious, I hope. When we came to the square, there was already a crowd of pioneers. Olga vigorously pushed through the crowd and approached the crime scene. Obviously someone had tried to blow up gender. 
but the attackers failed. The monument was still standing upright. There was only... That's what she wanted the activated carbon for. There was only dim ash traces on the pedestal. Well, who did this? She looked over the crowd of pioneers. Surely this wasn't done by an organized terrorist organization. These guys all came here just to look at what happened. I noticed Yolana and Alyssa in the crowd. And it looks like our camp leader noticed them too. Yoto, come here. They approached reluctantly. Why always me? If you think so. Show me your hands. What's wrong with them? I looked closer and saw they were smeared with black. Now it's clear. What did you make the bomb with? The junior terrorist seemed to hesitate over whether or not to confess and then blurted, blurted out proudly. Activated carbon, saltpeter and sulfur. Why exactly the monument? After all, it can never leave. What did this honored man ever do to you? The fighter for the rights of... Besides, he gave me activated carbon. She pointed at me with her finger. The whole square stared at me. Thoughts about the pointlessness of this act due to the small bomb size left me at that very moment. She stole it. I did nothing. Even if he gave it to you, I am sure that Semyon would never take part in such disgusting antisocial acts. Yes, yes, exactly, I agreed. I could hardly imagine how long she would have kept on scolding Alyssa if Electronic hadn't popped out at that very moment, shouting, I found it, I found it. Everyone turned towards him. He held a boot in his hand. Here. Yeah. Electronic boastfully shook it over his head. It's Shurik's boot. Okay, calm down. Tell us in detail where you found it. In the forest. On the way to the old camp. Whispers ran among the pioneers. The old camp. Not the old camp. Yes, he said the old camp. Do you see? Are you sure? Mm, absolutely. What's so special about this old camp? I joined in the conversation. It's nothing special, really, she stammered. One of Sovinok's legends tells the story of a young camp leader's ghost living there. She fell in love with a pioneer, but he rejected her, and so she killed herself. She committed Harikiri with a kitchen knife. The next day, the boy was hit by a bus. Yolana ran out of the crowd. Bus? I refrained from asking her about the root number. But science doesn't acknowledge the existence of ghosts, so we have nothing to be afraid of. Anyway, somebody should go there. Suddenly, the crowd started to thin out. Remember, if everyone else takes one step backwards, do the same yourself. Olga, it's almost night. Maybe tomorrow. I turned around and saw Slavia and Lena. What if at night? What if at night something happens to him? What if he leaves? No, today, right now. By the way, where is this place? Electronic roughly, no. <laughs> Electronic roughly described to me the directions and told me the story of the old camp. The camp leader looked at me attentively. If you think that I... You're the only man here, I mean. Look at Electronic. I looked around the area. Of course, Electronic was quick to flee. Still, I didn't want to walk in the woods alone. If you ask me, I would... <sighs> Let's go with Lena. I won't have to go there alone, will I? Olga thought for a moment. 
You may be right. We'll go together tomorrow. For the last few minutes, I'd noticed that Lena had a strange look on her face, as if she wanted to say something but didn't dare to. The pioneers started to disperse as if they'd forgotten about Elisa and the explosion. Even our leader seemed to calm down and didn't react when the wannabe terrorists left the square hiding behind Yulana. We should go too. Yes. Hold on. Go. I, I, I did click with go with Elena. Yeah. Because it's blacked out. Go with Lena. There, 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 there. Here. There. There. Doink, doink, doink. Okay. Night quickly fell on the camp. There was an almighty crash. There's only a brief moment between the first rays of the setting sun till complete darkness here in the south. Or maybe in this world, you don't have enough time to enjoy the variety of the sunset colours. It was too early to go to bed, but the leader confidently walked to her cabin, as if mentally dragging me with her. Olga, I'll take a little walk. Okay. She looked at me intently, but didn't find any reason to object, shrugged her shoulders, and kept walking. I went back to the square. I didn't really want to look closely at the trivial damage done to the gender statue, it was at the exact centre of the camp. If you don't know where to go, you should start from there. I sat on the bench and looked to the west. I wonder if the earth here resol revolves on its axis as it should. Or whether there was an actual north or south. It's hard to say. At this time, I didn't have any ideas about how to check the fundamental laws of nature. Hi. Lena appeared next to me as if from nowhere. Hello. Can't sleep? She looked at me in surprise. Well, yes, it is still early. May I sit? Yes, of course. Sit down. I moved over a little. Saying a little was in fact an understatement. I actually shifted myself to the end of the bench. Thank you. Lena sat and looked at the sky as if she'd forgotten about me. It's sad. What is sad? That Shurik disappeared. Yes, things aren't too good. She was calm as usual, keeping silent most of the time. She blushed and felt embarrassed only when she had to speak or do something. The same silence which could be seen as awkward by many people, including myself, was quite natural for her. I can hardly imagine Lena making an effort to carefully choose the right words to start a conversation or make a good remark trying not to look stupid, or alternatively, trying not to look as rude as Alyssa. I just wasn't able to compare her to anyone. She was just content being herself. Doesn't mean, does that mean that any attempts to start a conversation with her would be seen as rude? That the expression, become friends, could be interpreted as an intrusion into her private life? But something in this girl attracted me. Maybe it was her mysteriousness, and she certainly wasn't lacking in appearance or feminine charms. I didn't have an answer for that. That's why I still hadn't been openly accused of being annoying. I'm sure he'll be found. How can you escape from a submarine? Lena didn't appreciate the joke. This camp must seem like a large submarine to me only. I hope so. Tomorrow, Olga will call the police. They'll find him, for sure. But and what if during the night? Her expression grew sad. What if something happens to him? Alone? At night? In the forest? Anything could happen. He must be lonely. No one forced him to go there. What if he just got lost? He shouldn't go walking in the forest alone. You don't have any pity for him at all. Shurik may be sitting there all alone. Of course I pity him. I felt ashamed. In any case, Lena was right. A person was missing. 
Anything could happen during the night. We aren't seriously going to go search for him now, are we? She didn't reply, still looking somewhere far away, where the last rays of the sun shined over the tops of the old trees, as if trying to leave a bit of its warmth with the people. Do you really think that roaming around the forest in the dark is a good idea? Probably not. For some reason, I was sure that's exactly what she thought. Recently, I seem to be starting to understand Lena without words more often. And she seemed to be influencing me psychologically, making me agree with her. Lena's silence was more informative than any chatter or attempts at persuasion. They looked for him during the day already. Everywhere. She stopped watching the sunset and looked at me. I don't know. I think everywhere. What about the old camp? For the first time, her words sounded self-assured and not vague or indifferent. Where is it? I have no idea. Electronic told us. Well, if you trust him. I grinned stupidly, but Lena kept looking at me seriously. Damn, I must repair that zip. Sure. If it's not too far. Okay, right, we're well over 25 minutes, so I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Next episode will be The Hunt for Red Shurik, which can be Thursday if you guys give this 25 likes. If not, it'll be next week, so it's no great loss. Anyway, I have been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. She's still cute. Thank you. And good night.